Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the UK. I'll see you just checking my mic is on mute because I'm an idiot, but we're not. We're good, and we're getting ready to go in to our third game of the day. Uh, this is Envision versus Viperio. A few names that you'll recognize and a whole bunch of new names as well here in this game. Uh, Jamada? Certainly, across the board, I think, uh, of course, on the Envision side, you'll certainly recognize DBL. Uh, if you follow the UKEL or if you're sort of uh, somebody who follows the... Uh, sort of third division S type tournaments. Uh, Fuyu is also a, a UK AD name that you will certainly recognize. Sort of on the same uh, level as KZ from last split. Somebody that's been around for a while, that's always kind of been fringe at the bottom, ready for an opportunity to actually play in the UKLC. Uh, and he's finally got that under envision. On the other side, uh, Johnny Rico, I think played, of course, in the promotion relegations. Very impressed with him and last yeah. split in his UK, uh, UKL uh, run, honestly. Just kind of start to finish. I think he was probably the, the strongest jungler uh, in the UK at last. But something I've been really interested by coming into the UK LC is the priority on the Rumble ban. Uh, mm. Back in the NLC, I think it had almost 100% play rate. It was pretty much open every game. The teams were willing to trade it off. They prioritized entirely different champions. Uh, here in the UK LC, though, it feels like Rumble is the so Ables despised that it's just getting banned in every game. Now, something that has are. snuck through all of these ban phases is Viego. We haven't yeah, a single that, Viego. Ka Karma, Karma is apparently a higher priority than that champion. So yeah. let's, let's see what happens. Because, yeah, like you're saying, I think it's very curious to be seeing the uh, the Rumble bans, uh, on, especially on the red side, uh, to maybe try and force a, a blue side Udyr ban or like force an Udyr first pick. So it makes the, the draft a little more predictable if you're on red side. But... I, I, I'm as, as curious as you are. I think with the removal of Morgana from like the top level uh, jungle priority, uh, it could just potentially be a thing on this patch. A little more research to do potentially there. But uh, Nocturne being locked in. And honestly, you know what? I would love to just see this, you know, locked in with something like the Kai Something to just pair up immediate, you know, you know what your core identity is. You don't really care about hiding your cards that much. Uh, Let's go Galio. Pick up, yeah, I mean, unless you want to pick up maybe the highest tier jungler. Uh, but okay, we're going to see uh, the Jinx instead line, something that, you know, had a lot of priority throughout EUM, I think at the start of MSI, but not really towards the end of it. Um, obviously, it's had some nerfs to the armor and how much execution yeah. damage it has on the uh, on the neutral objectives, but still very much a very strong champion. Uh, so um, over to Envision to respond. I mean, we did see Jinx quite a lot in the uh, NLC as well earlier on in the week. So yeah. it's, it's kind of a bit of a hark back to that. The least sin being hovered here. John is going to take this one away, but remember, this is technically flexible. It can go top, it can go mid, it can go jungle. Not really showing too much here. And let's let the Cogmore pick up for Fuyu. It's going to be their answer to this Jinx lane. So we'll see what the next pickup is going to be for the side of Viperio. What do they want to kind of look to pair up with this Jinx? Do they want to give it something safe, like a Brawn that can kind of stand in front and kind of eat up a lot of the things flying at her? Or maybe something really hyper-aggressive? It's, it's hard, I think, to blind pick the Braum at this moment, because if you go for something like that, uh, then what you would probably end up seeing uh, is the Karma just put into the bottom lane uh, for Envision. Now, the Hecarim pickup is a bit interesting to me, just because, like I sort of said at the start of the day, it's obviously had buffs since it's since Hecarim's kind of guying of the tank build uh, variation. Whether it's, you know, viable now on 11.11 .11 because of the Divine Sunder buffs uh, is sort of another conversation to be had. Perhaps we get to see uh, the strength of it from Johnny Rico this time around. Uh, but at least to me, when you have Nocturne and, and Hecarim, the Jinx pick seems a little bit off theme when you consider you could have just locked in the Kai'Sa anyway, uh, yeah. unless you were scared of something else. But hey, let's see how this Jinx operates. For now, Viper, I think doing the right thing, I think removing away the Lulu still, even though you see the Karma, it's just the potential of Karma going in a solo. Uh, you don't have to deal with Karma and Lulu at the same time. Uh, it's too much uh, too much shielding. And at that point, even if you've got all this crazy dive, you probably would kill the Cogmore in the layer stages. All right, well, the final plan is going to be the Silas from the side of Hyperion. Now they're looking towards uh, Envision um, to see what they look to take away. What are they going to go for? It looks like for now will just be the Nautilus. So some kind of more engaged and kind of follow up to this dive is just Viperio. going to get denied. And now over to Viperio. What do they want to pick Yoda. up? I'm assuming we're probably just going to see their support here and kind of leave yeah. their counter pick mid until um, last pick. Unless they want to go fully down the dive like... Okay, Zeraf. Interesting lock-in. Interesting lock-in. Uh, now, Zeraf is a peculiar champion, and Vision are actually lacking on engage at the moment. So, if they don't draft that into their composition, this Zeraf pick could genuinely provide a lot of dividends. So, yeah, Envision have to think about their their, their B4 B5 here. Uh, 
Uh, it obviously is very crazy to lock it in blind. I'm not going to deny that. Uh, but okay, there you go. So one form of a little bit of pressure on the back line here in the Wukong. I think they're going to need another another option here. I think Karma has to go mid lane. I think you might have to pick an aggressive support. I, I think that might be the way. Unless you really want to blind put Karma into the bottom side where you're going to have to deal with a Leona. That would be just as scary, I think, in my opinion. So I think you put the Karma into the Zeraf, you pick up a uh, an engaged support. I think Leona is the most likely one. But no, we're going to see Diana in likely the jungle spot. I think this is going to be solo lane uh, or mid lane Lee with the Wukong top lane and, and jungle Diana. I like how we went from like, okay, Aperia have a fair amount of dive and yeah. no, uh, yeah. Envision just went, no, we have dive. No, we have dive. Yeah. <laughs> get themselves yeah. Diana, get themselves Wukong. Obviously, Lee Sin also kind of tails up into that as well, the dive. Eventually, so they got a yeah, lot yeah. jumping forwards and now mm. by Aperia looking for something that kind of stopped them from jumping forwards and that is going to be the Alistair lock in here. If you catch them with that pulverizes their mid-flight, you can stop them from getting on to your likes of your Zeref and your Jinxes. There's obviously the traps and the uh, the stun from the uh, Zeref as well to kind of play around. So it's going to be, you know, a, definitely some kind of mechanical play coming into the team fighting here. But a step away from that, and I'm curious to see what you kind of think both of these teams are looking to do, how they're going to be playing out, and who you think is going to kind of take that early advantage. Because the early advantage is the thing that we're, we're more focused on right now in the current meta. Yeah. It does feel like the teams that play aggressive early get ahead, ignoring that last game because that was a completely different uh, scenario uh, we've seen everywhere else. Yeah. Uh, so this is we've got two interesting drafts in front of us uh mr brain i i'll be honest with you i think that viperio if they go late game it's going to be a scenario of like okay can they keep jinx alive will she do the thing where she gets excited will zaref be able to really lay down meaningful poke all of these kind of questions have to come into mind i look at the envision composition i just say are they going to hit big one more combos like almost every single fight like, Kog'Maw almost is kind of a non-factor if the diving members can just remove Jinx and Zara from the fight. Yeah. Uh, at least that's kind of how I look at this team composition. I will say Hecarim could potentially have a good time in this game because the, the range uh, on the side of Envision is relatively low, removing the bottom lane, uh, which obviously you have the gap closes to get on top of them anyway. Uh, so depending on his build, uh, he could be a, a, a force to be reckoned with. But... These are such unorthodox drafts that I don't really know how to analyze this. I'll be honest with you. Uh, we've fair. got a lot of we've got a lot of kind of in the mail on fringe mail, but like the compositions can make sense, but don't really make sense, and can work together, but like probably shouldn't <laughs> almost ever. Uh, but it's what we have at the moment, so I I think this is probably just going to end up being a fiesta. I'm just going to chuck it down to that. I'm hoping we get another fiesta. So um, I, you know, you know, they're my play, my playground. They're what I love to watch is uh. Yeah. Teams have loaded in onto the ref will be moments away before we get into our third game of the day. And um, yeah, I, th I think this is going to be a really fun game. Again, a whole bunch of new players. And that's been probably the most exciting thing for me about this entire tournament is it's just, we've had so many new names this UKLC. I think this is probably been the season where we've had the most new names yeah. ever yeah, in, would, in the I tournament. So. I think even since its conception back when it was like, came from Forge Champions. I think it's honestly, I don't think we've seen this many new players in this league. Yeah, and I think obviously the import rule has a little bit uh, to do with that in terms of the change uh, and the variety of players that we've seen. But even some of the UK players are relatively new that we haven't necessarily seen before in the UKLC as, <clears throat> as far as this league is concerned. Uh, obviously, for you on our screens right here, uh, a majority of this Viperia roster, I think almost every player that they're fielding is from the UK. I think it's four out of five. I, I don't have the cheat sheet in front of me, so I actually wouldn't be able to tell you. Uh, I can tell you. I yeah, go ahead. Because I know, uh, I, I believe Shida, Johnny Rico, uh, Kum Kum. I think Hase is a UK player, but something's telling me that he isn't. Um, uh, oh, God. Okay. We have a cheat sheet for everyone behind uh, behind behind the scenes. A bit of uh, breaking <laughs> the fourth wall here. And it tells us a lot of information. Our beautiful... Beautiful uh, Magnus, a man who uh, works behind the scenes on uh, all of our shows, has put this together. Uh, right, who are we talking about? We're talking about... Um, Viperio. Viperio. They're the last uh, team on the list because they start with V. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that... I mean, if we're not using GBR flags. We're using English. English. Using that's English a Scottish flag, flag in there. All right, all right. Um, yeah, I think... I, I'm not sure what... Oh, oh Jake. Oh, we're in action. I've got something else. I've got a different tab open. I'm, I'm looking honestly, things up. I'm... Look, look, look. After last game, 
I will accept if you want me to do a little bit of solo casting for payback. I, I would get it. Honestly, I, honestly, I, I need to <laughs> let this flag up because it's going to drive you mad. Just hollow me if we... Uh, okay, all right. Hollow me if we have action. Right. You Google the flag. Uh, I will I, I will commentate. So, uh, looks like junglers both starting on their blue side jungles, respectively. I think Johnny Rico started on the red side. These guys in the bottom lane are really trying to get aggressive. And honestly, it's going to benefit uh, for you and prayer. Uh, I feel a little more just because sometimes you, you kind of forget about the lethal ranges, particularly of Cogmore, uh in the early stages of the game. Uh, as we get a look at the top lane, uh, this is an interesting matchup actually. Uh, I was talking with Mumus, the Hungarian top laner. He's playing, I don't know if he's been it, so I'm not going to say where he's playing just in case. But uh, <laughs> uh, he was talking me through the Wukong uh, Nocturne matchup. Um, and it's just not that fun for Wukong. Uh, if the Nocturne layers in the, the Teva, then it doesn't really matter if you lay down the uh, decoy because the Teva's still going to be attached to the real Wukong. Uh, so it keeps him in vision. Give us the flags, Jake. What what are they? All right. So um, Topi is uh, the only non-British player or uh, player from the UK. Uh, yeah. Their backup jungler, um, Danken, is actually Northern Ireland. That was what the flag was. I genuinely you have could... never seen the Northern Irish but, flag. Really? Yeah. So... Um, it's it's basically the English yeah, flag. I, you know, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you that because there's also uh, I think it's the Georgian flag. It's very similar. Uh, it's very flag. similar. Yes, it's so. actually very similar to that. That was I, I knew I'd seen it somewhere, and I obviously was getting modelled up with the Georgian flag. But yeah, um, this is a very British lineup yeah, on the side of Hyperio. Very very, very happy to see that, especially. Um, you know, there was a lot of talks. I think uh, when the import rule was introduced. Or the uh, newer one was introduced where you only needed two residents. Uh, just because there was a little bit of worry about, hey, what about UK players uh, gaining a little more opportunity? But, you know, I still feel across the board, there's a bit of an equal balance. You know, there's some rosters like the London roster, which, uh, of course, has uh, still three starting UK players. In this case, with Viperio, it's four. Uh, and, uh, you know, even a lot of the rosters like the Lucent roster, for example, uh, fielding, uh, it's, it's a nine or ten man roster. Uh, a lot of UK talent amongst that as well. Uh, whether they're starting or not, seems like they're going to rotate uh, a fair bit given their lineup in the previous game. But uh, let's, I mean, there's nothing really going on in this game. I was about to say, let's talk about it. But right now, it's just uh, a bit of a farm fest. Uh, I suppose we could talk a bit about Diana because it's not something we see very often. It's been a while. Um, yeah. So interesting enough, I've been playing Diana Jungle for a very, very long time. Uh, okay. Back before it was actually good. I just, because I sucked just, you just lane, felt like so I took it. a jungle. <laughs> um, since since obviously they switched her E and her R around, um, she's a lot more useful early in the jungle. Yeah, because typically I, back when I played her back when she had her old uh, her old R, um, you couldn't really gank unless you had like a lane that was like six. really set up Odd. for you. Yeah, uh, but this time around it's, it's a bit easier because obviously you have it from level three onwards. Uh, the wave clear, the jungle clear is actually very healthy and pretty quick like deceptively quick yeah and uh, i mean that's not like a recent thing as well like genuinely she's actually been quite a quick jungler for a pretty long time yeah i, I think perhaps with this season's jungle particularly she might have slowed down a fair bit because i feel like all attacking junglers in general took a very big hit with machete kind of being removed yeah um but honestly especially when they buffed her because they buffed her at the same time that they buffed champions like morgana rumble uh and the, you know the sort of just gone by slash um what do you call it uh, sort of S tier esque picks. Yeah, uh, she was buffed amongst those, but she was kind of pushed to the wayside. She was ignored uh, a little bit. Uh, but now, uh, with the Morgana being nerfed out, Rumble's obviously been hit once. But uh, I'm expecting another nerf, uh, and Udir even kind of falling second to those champions uh, in some cases. Diana could have some room as an AP jungler. Uh, in, in That'd be nice because. Yeah. We are, like you said, we are seeing priority on these AP junglers. It would be really nice to see. Her. I've been playing down a jungle since uh, the jungle Sheen item, which I can't remember the name of. Um, that was when I started playing her. In the jungle, she was really nice with that item. That was. Um... Oh, what was it called? God. It w was. it still called Runic Echoes? It might have been. No, Runic Echoes was what it became. It was Runic something. Um, and have you'll out. have to you'll have to message me on Twitter if you <laughs> if remember you know, the name of it because I can't. Uh, I do have my phone, so message me on Twitter and I'll update everyone on the stream. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. 
OZ has some really solid team fighting since the new uh, upgrade to the Moonfall, where you just suck everyone in, you get that big burst of damage depending on how many people you hit as well. It's pretty impactful so far, though, as we take a kind of stock of the, the game state. Hyperio's bot lane has been feeling the pressure as two cops does the everything Lee Sin does, every Lee Sin ever does. Yep. Lands the kick and then hops to a minion mid flight. Very, very uh, teasy, very annoying almost. But it kind of, you know, you can see some of these bait a lot of key abilities sometimes doing that. So I'll we'll have to see if two cops can actually find anything later on in the game. With cheeky little plays like that. So talk to me there. a little bit about this top lane matchup, because yeah. obviously yeah. we've seen uh, a rise in the Nocturne top. Uh, might, might have, have to, to hold this fort though, because yeah. uh, Jontas is coming in and might just be looking... Oh, Shader jumps in. The Moonfall is popped, and Shader able to survive. Yeah, does force the flash D though. DBL felt like he was in range uh, with the decoy dash, so he didn't flash to get the knockup, and that was probably the difference maker between Shader uh, probably dropping, or at the very least going very low, uh, and securing a little more priority on the top side to move in for this herald, uh, and seeing what you saw happen on our screens. But yeah, to touch on the matchup. Um, it's certainly Nocturne favored. I don't feel like the Wukong can really pressure him in terms of priority, uh, especially once you see things like the Iron Spike Whip come out uh, for the Nocturne. It, the wave clear just goes through the roof. It becomes impossible to really contest it. Uh, and on top of that, if the Wukong gets aggressive in trades, normally you'll see the Wukong either uh, decoy to get more damage in on the trade or decoy away. Well, the Teva reveals uh, the decoy swap out. So yeah. he can still see the real Wukong uh, Kum Kum here doing a great job at respecting the fact that he's on the weak side of the map right now. However, I will say it's curious and vision. I don't think. Or rather, uh, ah. Mercurio, uh, Johnny Rico has pulled out the Herald, I think, in the room. I think he's just doing it very far away from the pit. I, I, hard I don't like what Prayer's doing here. This yeah, should just I, be he should be leaving. He should be, yeah, Why? He, should be, he should be leaving for you alone, especially when it's a Cogmore. Uh, just sitting behind him, making sure he doesn't get jumped onto. That's all you really need to do. That was uh, basically an entire plate. Uh, worth of gold and, denied and for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, play in half from for you just denied because Prayer wanted a little bit extra gold. Um, me, Moonstone champion. Me, me gold. <laughs> oh, uh, actually, ah, yeah, Moonstone's kind of bad at the moment, so it, it's probably actually going to be the uh, Shirelias, but the sentiment still stands. Of course, yeah, because in the last game, I was like, wow, Leandre's Seraphine. Of, of course, Moonstone's not actually as impactful anymore. Yeah, it got a love tap buff again on this patch. I think it's still. Might need another number. I, for one, am happy to see it gone. I mean, it's kind of taken the place as the old, like, ardent of hate, right? Like, everyone hates Moonstone. Well, not necessarily hates, but uh, dislikes playing against the Moonstone champion. Just like my problem, my problem with Moonstone is the amount of champions that build Moonstone. Like, the thing with I mean, they was like, that. they fixed that issue already, though. They, yeah, I, I know, but that it still stings, right? <laughs> like, yeah. why did Lilia have Moonstone? That just, like, for me, that was like so painful. I can understand like the only jungler that should build it is like Ivan. I think Nidalee as well. And we had like Anivia's oh, building it and stuff. Oh <laughs> god, like it was that you know it's broken when Anivia's would you, would building a see... support item. Yeah. Uh or, or let's not forget about Imperial Mandate. You have a... oh, oh, this... god. <laughs> Do you remember Victor with Imperial Mandate? That was I don't remember Victor. I remember Maokai. Uh, Imperial Mandate. I remember, like, people, well, we people had the Imperial Mandate AP. Ash area as well for a while. Yeah. I mean, people still do. I mean, that's that go to ARAM Ash build for the record. Yeah. All right. But uh, uh, Maokai still can do it in support. And AP Maokai does a deceptively large amount of damage as Hornetis is setting up for a lane gank, trying to return oh, he's just no got flash the available. Lane gank, and that is an oh. easy first blood. It's, it's, yeah, it doesn't get easier than that. Um, <laughs> She don't no flash just isn't expecting a Diane to pop out of that bush, uh, and it happens so fast that there's not really much a response for Viperio, uh, other than hoping that someone rotates into the death brush that they've currently set up between Harse uh -oh. and Johnny Rico. Now, Freya, he's he's fishing, but I don't think he's gonna fall for it. However, Fuyu, oh, they feel like Fuyu's alone, but they might find prayer instead. They all have sums. Fuyu's in trouble, gonna try and get that flash off. The paranoia has been used, the teleports are coming in. Fuyu's trying to get some space, gets flashed, gets headbutt, gets pulled back in, Ooh. and Shielder secures the kill. DBL too slow to the punch, tries to get a little bit of additional damage off, but no Moonfall available to Jontis, and 
That's just for you, losing his life for free as the Rift Herald is summoned in the bot side of the map and DBL and the rest of uh, Envision are going to have to try and contest this. Teleport's coming Teleport. in. They're looking for a bit of a turnaround here. It's only going to be the goal given over. Two cups comes in, gets a beautiful kickoff, delivers DBL the kill. Johnny Rico running away and the monkey will give him one last bonk. It's not a monkey, it's a jauntist. <laughs> I just sound like I flamed the hell out is of Jauntis. I said I said Juantis earlier for some reason. Is it Juant is it Juantis? I you know I'm I, so, I, I always I'm get... very English, so I'm saying yeah. Jauntis. It's I, probably Juantis. It's probably Juantis, isn't it? This is, these are the kind of things that as casters we should just know before the Alright. Anyway. Jauntis Quantis, can you send us a message yeah. after Drop this us, game if you see the VOD? Message. Yeah. How the hell do we say your name? Anyway, action, replay, you go. Yeah, so Nocturne Armor on top of the teleport, it just makes life a little bit harder for Envision to actually try and coordinate a fight in, to uh, in terms of what's actually going on. And on top of that, the Zarif Armor was also sort of laid on top. And then Vipiro kind of overcommit because they dropped the Herald. They want to try and get a little gold uh, onto Kum Kum on this Jinx. But quite frankly, it's just a bit of an overstate. Two Cups is able to teleport on the flank ward, get the kick in. And even though the Herald is put down, all of the gold goes into Johnny Rico. So you know, not that it's a terrible thing, but when the play initially was likely made to give it to your hyperscaling AD carry, uh, it feels a little bit bad to lose out uh, in that sense. But all things considered, Vision still very far up in the gold department, about 3,000 gold uh, ahead at the moment. For you, building towards which I assume is going to be a Kraken Slayer. Uh, there's obviously been talks of the uh, tank more. The tank more. Yeah. We're yet to see it, um, at least in the UK and Nordics, because we, we did see a couple saw... last week. It wasn't Monk that played it, because I think Monk or did Monk play it. Who was it? Dragdar. Dragdar played it, was it Dragdar. Uh, on day one, I believe. Um, and, well, it didn't look so hot. I don't really know if that had much to do with Dragdar. I'm leaning more in the favor of no. But uh, Kog'Maw's always been that champion, right? Where. As long as he, as a champion, isn't too weak uh, and he gets whatever items are sort of meta to the moment, uh, he will kind of just do cog more things, engage well, on the prayer. He's gone. <laughs> trying to feed him a little bit of additional gold, but prayer will lose his life trying to set up onto Hase. Has just a little bit too tanky for the cog more at the moment. Only got those component items and not even the full ones. Johnny Rico is going to get pulled in. They've got the paranoia off, looking for a Cogmore. Jaunt is able to find the kill. Shelda tries to jump away with the Stride Breaker being hunted, but will survive. And Vision find himself a quick kill. Yeah, nice uh, response there. As now the Herald isn't quite spawned up yet. It's got about 10 to 15 seconds on its timer. So Envision can actually start to potentially sort of set up uh, around this one with the priority they've got. Cheetah, I mean, he has flash, so I'm not sure at how much threat he is to a dive, but if he continues this trade... <laughs> well, he has to flash, but Jontis just jumps into his face! He uses that passive auto to get a massive cleave off and a burst of damage. Yilda goes down. Yeah, just a little bit too over-aggressive. Doesn't wreck it. It's just not his side of the map right now. Uh, plain and simple. Uh, it is just complete darkness, actually. If we could maybe get a toggle for Viperio Vision, you can just see it, it, there's no real need for him to be on this side of the map uh, at the moment after that mid lane play. Almost telegraphed, but nonetheless, drops to it. And Vision, Herald, Killing Pocket, two dragons to their name. And it's an Infernal Dragon this time around. And when you've got Kogmo, when you've got Wukong, when you've got Diana, these are all really great users uh, of the Infernal Soul and all the stats that come with it. Take a look at the scoreboard as well. Uh, Quantis, Juantis. The Diana is very fit. <laughs> he has yep. Uh Rocket Belt. He's going to recoil. He's probably got a lot of gold in his pocket he's about to spend. He's just bought Magi's. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that's right. that's that I want to continue to get fed. Yeah. Or I'm, I'm going to get, I'm going to feed. Yeah. <laughs> there's only ever this, there's, there's one now, of two things that happens when you build that item. There is one thing I will say is it's, in some cases, a bit risky to do it when you could go Zonyas considering it, or uh, Stopwatch rather, because it's your third dragon fight of the game. But Viperio, honestly, unless they get a miracle level fight, I think they might have to do this or not. I think they probably can't fight unless Envision are the ones that make a misstep. Uh, and right now, there's just too many tools, trading tools available uh, to Envision 
Uh, they're going to have both their teleports up and available. They've got the Herald in their pocket. Now, the only thing that Viper really have going for them is the fact that they might have sort of side lane priority, just because uh, Sheeta on this Wukong on the. Are you, oh. are you are you sure about that? Yes, okay. you're sure about that. Yeah. Right, well, he's going to get away unless. Oh wait! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he just flashed into his face. <laughs> DBO, you're a lunatic. He's reminiscing his Eminem days in spring. That's what this is oh. right now. I think he's seen him. He's going ring around the rosy. Well, uh, Riftel's going to get summoned in the mid lane. That is over-eager play, I'm going to say. Probably the best way to word that is uh, Shelly has been summoned and is probably going to lose her life pretty quickly here as this cannon's going to distract her long enough for them to get the autos off and Kum Kum going to be able to take it down and it is on to the dragon. Health bars are kind of chunked, but I don't think Viperio are even considering it because of the lack of vision right now in the bombside river. Who use low? Oh, oh he, if he wait, Fuyu's dead. dead? Yeah. Missed that one. Yeah. Rocket was even over the top. Uh, just for the fact of, hey, maybe this one hits. Uh, two. Oh, yeah, I mean, Fur Dragon in pocket now for Envision. I, that, it's been a very slowish paced game with some very comical <laughs> moments mixed in. As they're one away from Soul now. And again, Infernal. Envision use it so damn well. Uh, and Viperio being in the position that they're in, if they give up an Infernal as well, life is just going to get really tough. And on top of that, uh, Jontis, uh has now picked up a stopwatch, so it's going to be all the harder to actually uh, pick him off. And he can even get a little more aggressive on the tower dive if he really needs to. We can see the Gale Force has obviously been finished from the Fuyu, building towards what we're checking now, if you see, will be that um, Wit's End. So you're going to get a little bit more towards what we typically do see from these Cogmores. And it's just, I think, Envision just happy to chill for the moment and wait for um, the next dragon. That will be the Infernal Souls to them, which is going to do absolutely numbers. You've got that Cog Cogmore proccing that fairly easily with the Bio Arcane Barrage. Or well, Living Artillery, sorry, Bio Arcane Barrage is a different ability. Either way, bad result is he's going to do a lot of bloody damage. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Viperio, in a way, they're on a timer. But they also have scaling elements for themselves, but, you know, Infernal Soul is such a oppressive thing to have to deal with. And let's say that Envision pick up this dragon on spawn, in three minutes time, Viperio either just can't contest it or they try to and die. Then the Elder's also on the map. And if they lose the fight badly enough, Envision could even pick up Baron oh. off the back of that play, but hey, hold Fred. on. Getting Engaged. sniped by the right of the Arcane oh. and the rocket comes in to secure the kill. Johnny Rico now being hunted. There's that paranoia trapped up and locked up the three remaining members who are playing forwards. There's the charge out. Two Cups is able to jump away and DBL loses his life. Two for none in favor of Viperio here. Yeah, Viperio using the strength of the Zerath oh, there oh, as well. Oh, oh. Jauntis jumps away, Protobus to safety, two cups jumps in, that's the kill for him. Now he's getting CC chain, tries to jump out. Now they've got the lockdown onto Jauntis. Jauntis has to go golden shell, they're almost oh. sniped by the living artillery. For you now being hunted down, those rockets in the oh, reset are there. Kungum's doing damage, the Zap it's has to get flashed, and Johnny Rico able to clear away to safety. And Vision getting hypey and paying the price. Yeah, exactly that. Prayer steps too far forward, tries to flash away from his sins, but quite frankly, the range advantage, just because Zeref has the ultimate, just because of the Jinx rocket on top of it as well, which I think was the thing that actually executed him uh, in the end. You can just see, he just steps too far forward, trying to secure vision. The rocket, boom, blows him up. It's a double teleport, I believe, from the uh, point you say, hmm, maybe they can carry on uh, just because they've, oh, they've got the numbers here, but DPR just gets blown up. He's on top of too many members of Hyperio. There's no follow-up, uh, even if he could have pressed his buttons in time. And at this point, it's just Envision trying to salvage something, but they should know the numbers are here. So they've just had a play go awry on this side of the map. And from this point on, it's just pretty much doomed. I'm not even sure where Kunkum actually walked up to to be absent for the previous 15 seconds, but he shows up again anyway. He gets excited. And I, quite frankly, I feel like if Johnny Rico wanted two cops dead, he could have gone for it as well. Uh, and they could have potentially even turn back around towards the Baron. And they wanted to play it safe though, and that has now swung the gold lead 
A little bit more closer towards Viperia. We're one off that Infernal Dragon, though, so it's a little bit scary for Viperia right now. Yeah, there's all no. Look at. Look at Hase. Look I... closely. Oh. He's floating again. The Alistar floating bug is still here. This bug. I can't believe this bug still exists. <laughs> I'm sorry, like, it just gets me every time. It's the first time that we've seen it because, you know, we've obviously been on... Bro oh, that is so much damage from one Zerath Oh, my goodness. Envision, they got... don't even have the sustain. He's got the Void Staff. He's he's, he's yeah. thrown oh, out the right oh, arm well. you. Being hunted Yo, the hold on. the rocket. Coom Coom able to find the kill. Shoulder just flashes away to safety. There's DBL using that Cyclone trying to disengage himself. Jauntis sees a lot of low health bars. Can he get the... the Second dash through. Can he get the moonfall on the three? Oh. Lock down the flashes and Jauntis has to go golden. Tupi gets kicked out and that's going to be Johnny Rico slaying him for the kill. Tupi's low. Oh, Kunkun, Tupi's out. Kunkun's Kunkun resetting. Kunkun is just running through this team fight. Viperio slay everybody on the side of Northern. Um, Vision, I get in my team. I get in my, you... my <laughs> leagues muddled up. But that's the first it's dragon right. for Viperio. It's all right. It's the first dragon for Viperio. It's the soul denial away from Envision and honestly it's just, just the Xerath dealing so much damage initially you see the uh, barrage coming over the top and quite frankly the rocket is just spot on on top of the Nocturnal armor there's nothing really for you can do about it even if you had flash you probably still would have died and at this point it looked a little bit dicey for Viperio to be totally honest with you Johnny Rico however is just healing for so much HP and on the backside uh Envision members are kind of surviving uh, but as soon as the Moonfall comes out uh, it's, it's, nothing really happens and Viperio, throughout the entire time, Kumkum Kum is just untouched and he's just right clicking with the rockets. And there's just too much damage to be put up with. I questioned this Zeraf when I first saw it. But uh, it's finally starting to pay dividends. Like we said, there's no true hard engage on this vision, Envision uh, draft. You've got, you know, flank angles, flash force engages. But you don't have things like a Leona, you don't have a Norlus, uh, you don't have those kind of you know, what you consider standard engage tools. A lot of the engage members on this Envision lineup are champions you'd consider probably like secondary engage, unless they're finding a flank to, to start a fight. So again, if Toppy now can continue being untouched, it's going to get really difficult for Envision to do anything because they just don't mm. have the sustain to deal with the poke. And Kum Kum on top of that now, once this gold draft uh, drops, I'm pretty sure he's got to be at three items uh, given some of the, uh, or two items rather. Uh, I, did, I, I did want to uh, point out that Jontas has now sold the Magis. Um <laughs> Didn't quite work out, so has just taken that one apart as uh, Tupi also has a Magis now. So he's saying, he's, he's, I will get stacks more effectively than you can. He's ripped up the book and Tupi says, uh, okay, yeah, maybe it's my go. <laughs> maybe, I, maybe I can stack up some names in the Death Note. And, uh, Baron buff, I don't think it's been used to gain too much other than map control at the moment. But quite frankly, that's all you kind of need after oh. the direction this game was going. Shade of them. Shadow tries to jump away, has got multiple people coming in. It's sustaining up a lot, but there's wow. the kick. Here's DBL. <laughs> One bop to the head, and the spooky ghost goes down. Yeah, monkey bonk. Monkey Just bonk. And that's a rocket. DBL. That's a rocket. That's a rocket. I'm not going to hit two cop. Uh, mid lane tower. Tier two goes down. Oh. And the siege, you can see like a third HP off of the Oh, teleport. You. DBL's got Cyclone. Yeah, so it's two good. cops coming in. They're trying to get a kill onto someone, but the carries are away. It's just going to be a roast beef for the side of Envision now. Jontis will get himself a kill. 25 minutes on the clock. Got two minutes until that dragon comes up and they're able to find themselves a quick return kill, but they've now lost their 2-2 in the mid lane and Envision trying to see if they can quickly pick up this one here mid in response as well. A lot of damage coming out from 2P, though. Yeah, there is uh, <laughs> so much damage. There, there's no, you can't freeze it any other way. Uh, if you're getting hit by these Qs off the Xerath, you're just losing a lot of HP. Uh, and again, no sustain. Oh, oh boy. Oh. oh. No, missed, missed just a few too many there, unfortunately. My god. It's still so much, though. And Yeah, damage oh. like that. Oh. I wonder if that damage graph even takes into account the <laughs> damage he just did to free you. Because... <laughs> I yeah, I don't know how quick it. our API works. Yeah, I don't know how quick the uh, the API is on that. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, 
Zerath deals a lot of bloody damage. That's uh, that's that. And Envision, they really have to find the way to try and take this guy down because if he's alive and he's poking out members, it means, you know, Fuyu can't, you know, get maybe a little more aggressive stepping forward to find a couple more auto attacks. Uh, and then it means that Kum Kum might even have that much more space just because certain members just can't step into the CC and the damage uh, that he can provide. And Hase has also been doing a really good job too of providing both peel and engages and re-engages uh, for his carries in this one. So uh, Viperio are setting up for this fifth dragon of the game and potentially their second if they're able to get it. Stacking up these infernal dragons onto the likes of 2P. That hurts. Um, obviously, yeah. when you've got the Infernal Soul <laughs> on a poke champion like a Xerif, it's even more impactful. So we'll keep our eyes on that. Level 16, so three points in that right of the Arcane. Maximum damage coming out from that. Got the Medjais, yeah. got the Ludens, and now building towards the uh, Death Cap. Death Cap. Well, potentially, actually, Horizon's Focus. I'd probably yeah, be at Horizon's I Focus, actually, because it's Xerif. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it depends on his gold values when he resets. Uh, I think if he's got the gold for another Nizli Large, then he'll probably pick that one up. Actually, if it escapes me what the other component is for... It is uh, a Hextech alternator. The, the Hextech, yeah, that one. Uh, so if he's got the 1000 mark, he'll probably go for that. 1.2k, he'll probably go for the rod. But you can see right now, Envision, of course, still one dragon away from Soul. Two Cups was on a ward right there. Uh, just cleared that one out. So he's maybe not going to be able to find a flank angle, though. If he stays there for too long, Vi Vipira might check it. Oh, they're just going to jump straight side. in onto Fuyu. Fuyu. He's taking one shot, two shot. Has to use the stopwatch, and there's the next one. Johnny Rico oh will God. finish him up. Now jumping onto the back line. The Nocturne slides forward. Shielder trying to get that fear off. Slowed down and now getting chased onto. DBL running amok on the back line, although he is just being melted. Kum Kum untouched at the moment. Dodges away. The Moonfall hits. He flashes out of there to safety. There's going to be the turnaround. Hasse comes in, gets the pole. Double kill onto Kum Kum. A lot of damage coming from Prey with the slow as he tries to land a zap. As Jontis able to dodge away. A lot of damage coming out from that Q, but it's a triple kill triple for Kum Kum. Prayer is running to the wind, trying to dodge every little bit of spells, but it's going to be a quadra kill onto Kum Kum. Yeah, Jinx picking up that quadra kill, and quite frankly, I think with that, it's just going to be another dragon in the back pocket for Viperio. I think the death timer should be long enough for them to go all the way onto the other side of the map and pick up the Baron as well. Yeah. So... I think we got 40 Vipiro. seconds until Baron spawns and oh, okay. 43 seconds until Jortis spawns. So yeah, that, no. that's probably going to be pretty hard to contest. Although things like for you and uh, DBL should be up in time to try and play a nuisance around that area. So yeah. we'll see whether or not that's going to happen. Uh, if you wonder why you're back at us, we did have ourselves a quick player freeze. Um, as you can see, we're in pause screen. Yeah. Let's have a look at the action though. Yeah, so two cops here trying to find a flank, but for you, I just... I don't know. I, I quite frankly don't know. Hase doesn't even have to commit the flash for that uh, combo to connect. So it's just a, a complete overstep. Uh, and it costs Envision this fight from start to finish. They don't have a Cogmore anymore to layer in all attacks. DBL doing his best on the back uh, on the back line to try and buy time. But he just doesn't have the solo damage when he's in the middle of that many members to actually find lethal on anybody. Uh, and all the while, again, Kum Kum, he's always able to just right-click people. We'll ignore the fact he hit that uh, control ward right there because he connects the zap onto Diana uh, and then Chida here just provides him with that nice easy layup for that quadra kill. Yeah, we are. so basically what's happened is we've had a quick freeze on one of the players so they are just going to be quickly restarting themselves although it looks like uh, the problem has been fixed so we should be getting back into the action, back into the game. This is probably just going to be that second dragon picked up for the side of Viperio and it's probably going to be that Baron. We'll see whether or not uh, for you, ADBL can do anything to stop this from going down. As uh, we'll be loading back into the action real quick. Yeah. It's, uh, any we'll moment. Do it. Any, any second. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've missed the show, Jake. I've I have to. I genuinely, <laughs> honestly, like, when you have a month off, it's like, oh man, a month off? That's going to be amazing. And then, like, week and a half in, you're like, oh god, I'm so bored. And especially like during like these times, like I feel like if I was able to go out and chill with people, yeah. maybe the month off would have been nicer. Yeah. But I was just in my room for a month, just sat there like, okay. Yeah, that's the sure. that's the thing because you know during slightly more normal times, you can you can go out places, do stuff, have a little more fun. Obviously, the, the lockdowns here in the UK are easing up a bit, uh, but for some people, some people just still can't. Like, yeah, places. but they they eased up at the tail end of our month. Yeah. So that, that like so that it, time like. It was iffy to do anything anyway. 
yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know about you. I still have my room playing new games. So I, oh, I, yeah. I um, I've got really in. I started playing a uh, a ROM hack of Pokemon Emerald called Emerald Kaizo. Oh, and really? It's really hard. It's really fun. Um, <laughs> like basically, the level scaling is higher. They give all of the gym leaders six Pokemon. So it's not like one of those really edgy ones where they just add new Pokemon or whatever. It's like it's an honest ROM hack, and they add a few more Pokemon from the other games that weren't available. So there's more encounters you can get, but like it's right. fairly well scaled. Like you're not gonna find like a legendary in like a starting zone. It's like you'll just find a couple more kind of like you'll find like Pidgeys in the earlier area, so you have more options in what like you can run in your team. Oh. Um, but like the the AI is absolutely crazy. Um, and like Tate and Liza have a Latias and Latios. Uh, and a, we're gonna hold okay. this because TPO yeah, is uh, uh, <laughs> jumping forward. He's gonna lose a lot of his health. Bars. Johnny Rico's trying to get that final lockdown. As in goes Shield onto Prayer. Prayer's locked down, and he finds himself the kill. Johnny Rico just chases forwards with the onslaught of shadows. As Hase gets himself a two-man knockup, and they're oh, gonna oh, be the turnaround. Forward. Seeing if Fury can put out the damage, but he's unable to do so. Two cups is low. Just oh. able to survive. No rocket available oh. for the Jinx, and it just looks like with that team fight victory, Viperia should be able to pick up this Baron. Yeah, uh, and it's just it's so disjointed from Envision this game in some of these team fights uh, post the early game. And it's showing quite heavily. DBL takes the Blast Cone, he thinks that Viperia are a little more committed to the Baron than they are in positioning. Uh, and he just ends up in front of too many members, drops way too early. Prayer just on the retreat, uh, trying to salvage the situation, drops as well. Viperia picking up the Baron. And all of a sudden, well, I say all of a sudden, it's felt like Viperia have been in control for a very long time. But with the Baron now, uh, again, going to be able to, you know, probably turn this into a third dragon, uh, Infernal Dragon for them, put them uh, the game on a Infernal Soul Point. Uh, if it does indeed go that long, Cogmore, again, it feels like, every, you know, we saw Cogmore in the NLC, it just wasn't really able to achieve anything. Uh, and it feels like, again, this is a scenario where, you know, Cogmore's kind of just shoehorned in. Yeah, like he's just here for little to no reason. <laughs> it, felt, it felt like they went, oh, we have a karma. So uh, I'll, let's hold go Pogmore. Yeah, like, shield. oh, had good shield. Yeah, that was that was really good. It's really hard to time that too. It, that I'm not going to oh, say no. it was intentional. Oh, oh and he's going to oh, turn no. it straight into a play. Oh, it's such a sad B. Wow. Wow. Well. That is the length of Nocturne Ultimate at level 3, ladies and gentlemen, and Viperio honestly could just turn this into game end. Oh, DBL just lost a third of his health. Yeah, this game me. end. And I think that actually is just game. They're charging. They have no Cogmore. They've killed the Lee Sin. No ultimate on Jajontis. Topi's going to make sure this game is over. 33 minutes on the clock, and Viperio absolutely clap and vision. Yeah, it was looking a little bit... Uh, you know, like it, it could have been a potentially quick one for Envision just because of how fed the top side was. Uh, you know, the Cogmore wasn't necessarily behind, but he wasn't like crazy ahead either. Um, but yeah, it's just too many fumbles in the mid game, uh, trying to pick up the soul. And if I to turn it around, turn it on its head, they get the dragons, they get the barons. Uh, they're just more cohesive as a unit in these team fights. Yeah, that was honestly a really, really nice, uh, Really nice game from um, the side of Viperio. Turning, um, you know, I looked at this team, I looked at both the teams, and I, I, I obviously like one vision to put together, but like you said, yeah. with the Cogmore, it did feel a little bit kind of just thrown in there. You had a karma, so you went, oh, we got a shield chap. Let's let's get let's play Cogmore. Uh, unfortunately for them though, they do lose that game, and Viperio will take the win. For now though, it's time for us to take a break. So grab a snack, and we'll be back with a interview with uh, the team manager after the break. See you in a moment. 